EpoxyCountertopDIY.com here for an instructional video on how to mix and pour epoxy. We get a lot of questions from people asking why is my epoxy tacky, why is it not curing fully, why is it tinted yellow, etc. So we want to go over a quick instructional video on how to mix and pour epoxy because usually the problem is in the mixing stage of pouring the epoxy if that makes sense. So the first and most important stage of pouring epoxy is reading the directions fully. Today we're going to be working with Incredible Solutions Tabletop Epoxy. I have the directions here in front of me. Each manufacturer has their own unique set of instructions, although they are similar, each of them is slightly different. So read through the directions so that you know and understand what epoxy you're working with and what they require in terms of mixing. This particular epoxy that we're working with today is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. The required temperature is between 70 and 80 degrees ambient. As you can see right now, we are 74 degrees ambient, so we're almost at 75 degrees, which is the optimal temperature to pour. And that is a big problem that we see a lot of people having is they're pouring in too cool of temperatures and you're not getting a proper cure or a proper pour. So make sure that you have the proper temperature in a dust free environment if you possibly can. And always, this is the most important step of the epoxy process is to test on a sample piece or a sample area before you go pouring an entire bar top like this one behind me. So as you can see in front of me, we have a little piece of cedar slab. It's the same cedar that this bar is behind me, but this is just a sample piece. So we're going to pour on this, do a seal coat and test it before we actually go pour a big project like a bar top. It is really, really important because each piece of wood is slightly different. I I wish I could give you an example and just say, oh, if you're working with wood, do this, but cedar is different than oak, is different than pine, and even furthermore, each cut is different. So you might pour a piece and it is all well and good, and then you get a different piece which is slightly different. So always pour a sample piece or a sample area before you go pour the entire project. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and mix up some epoxy and we're gonna put a seal coat on this. So first and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and put on some gloves. This is a really sticky material, so you wanna go ahead and get yourself some gloves on. And make sure to be doing this in a well-ventilated area. This particular epoxy does not put off a strong odor, but some might, so it's always wise to do it in a well-ventilated area. Gonna go ahead and mix up our epoxy. We have graduated containers in front of me that have all the ratios outlined. As I mentioned previous, it is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, so it's a relatively easy pour to mix up. And as I mentioned, we have these graduated containers. Here's your one-to-one -one mix. We're gonna actually pour a lot of this today because I'm gonna finish up another project, but we're gonna go ahead and pour the one-to-one -one mix. And take your time and make sure you're on a level surface so that you are, in fact, getting to that level. So go ahead and pour this out up to the number one. Okay, so as you can see, hopefully this will come out. We are in fact filled up to that number two line, so we have an equal mixture of resin and curing agent or a catalyst uh, mixed together. And we're gonna mix for five minutes first, and then we're gonna pour into an additional container and mix for an additional three minutes just to ensure that we get a full mix. And when you're mixing, you don't have to be mixing really, really fast. It just can be a slow and deliberate mixture. Right away, you'll notice that the epoxy will get a little bit hazy and you'll see some bubbles develop. That's fine, that's the uh, chemical reaction taking place. So just mix slowly and be sure to scrape the edges so you're getting a full mixture of that epoxy. So we'll go ahead and mix for five minutes in this container and then we'll rotate over to the next. So after five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and pour this into a brand new container. This ensures that we're getting a full mixture. So we'll pour this over into a new container. Be sure to scrape the bottom and the sides thoroughly so you're getting all of that mixture over to the new container. And then we're gonna go ahead and stir for an additional three minutes. After mixing for an additional three minutes in the new container, we're gonna go ahead and pour immediately. You're gonna to wanna to do that because the chemical reaction is happening, and if you wait, it's gonna overheat with that much epoxy in one container. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this on, and it's just gonna be a seal coat, which is just a real fine coat. Does not have to be perfect. You do not have to cover everything, and if it doesn't look perfect, it's fine, because again, this is just a seal coat. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this on.
And again, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And then what we're going to do is just drag the epoxy slowly to each edge. You're not painting it, you're just dragging it to make sure that you're getting it evenly covered across the project. Uh, some parts of the wood you might notice will suck up more epoxy than others and it just depends on how porous that surface is. And make sure to cover the edges. And again, it's not really a painting, you're just dragging the surface of that epoxy from one side to the other or from the center out just to make sure you're covering the project fully. You will notice, like I said, that some parts of the project take more epoxy than others, and that's, again, based on how porous that wood is. And after you've got an even coat across, You'll notice that I haven't really spent much time on the sides and that's fine because again, this is not the final coat. This is just a seal coat. We're trying to do this to prevent bubbles. This is really important to prevent any bubbling is that seal coat so you can allow that air to escape to the top side. So after, immediately after you feel like you've done this sufficiently, we're gonna go to heating and you can do that one of two ways. You can do that with a torch or a heat gun, or even sometimes you can get away with a hair dryer. So today we have a torch. Uh, be a little bit careful with this. This takes a little bit of skill to get going. Uh, we'll go ahead and fire this up. And you're just holding it about six to 10 inches away from the project, and you're gonna see the bubbles start to come to the surface and pop. You don't have to be too close, just about six to 10 inches, and you'll see those bubbles popping right away. Alternatively, like I said, you can use a heat gun or a blow dryer. We can use a heat gun as well and show you how that works. Six to 10 inches and you'll see those bubbles are starting to pop right away. So after you feel like you have all the bubbles pop, we're gonna go ahead and let this cure up for four hours before we go ahead and do the final seal coat. After four hours, it's tacky enough and we can go ahead and pour that additional flood coat over the top and let it roll off the sides. So now that we've let this cure for four hours, we'll go ahead and pour the flood coat. I'm actually gonna work on two projects, so I only have to mix one batch of epoxy, but it's been curing for four hours. It's tacky to the touch, so we're ready to pour a flood coat and that's what we'll go ahead and do right now. Been a few days and the epoxy is fully cured not tacky it's uh, super hard so we are now at the end stage and I just want to give you guys a look at before and after the pour so when we started this is what the cedar board looked like and then after we applied the epoxy you're getting a nice shine and glossy look like that so I can hold these up here so you can see the difference in the color quality before and after with those two boards and when you do a sample piece like this or a sample area it doesn't have to go to waste my wife is already going crazy with these with the holidays setting out different candles or setting up a holiday decoration so you can always try to make use of that if not and you have to throw it away it's not a big deal always just want to test that sample area before you go pour an entire bar like we have done right here in front of us we have full reviews of each brand of epoxy on epoxycountertopdiy.com read through those make sure you're getting the right epoxy for your project thanks so much for watching subscribe give us a thumbs up it's what helps us to keep going and we'll be back next time for another instructional video. Mm -hmm.